8, the palace. Just as the car started moving, Lily made up her mind. I must have my eyes gazed outside the window. That way, I don't have to face him. But soon, the window got black. So black that she could not see anything outside. She turned her face to Marcus, who leaned on the seat and smirked. I like to have privacy in my car. He moved closer to Lily. Her breathing became unusual. Now he was sitting too close to her. Even though she did not look at him directly, she could feel his gaze on her. She audibly gulped and looked at him. His gaze went down to her neck. He extended his hand. Lily shivered and muttered to herself, This is the moment, the moment when I lose my virginity. She sat numb, unmoved. She could feel his muscular hand on her neck, which slowly slipped down. Her heart was beating audibly, as if it would slip out of its cage. He opened the first button of her overcoat. He kept going down until the coat was entirely unbuttoned. Then, he extended both his hands to pull down her coat. Lily kept sitting still. She could hear the thumping of her heart. Oh my god, what is he going to do next? Lily thought to herself. The coat is stuck in one place. The thread on the collar got intertwined to a thread on her jumpsuit. Marcus held her neck and moved his lips closer to her. There were a thousand butterflies in her tummy when he held her neck gently with both his hands. Now he was too close to her. She could feel his breath on her neck. The moisture of his lips gave her goosebumps. He opened his mouth and broke the thread with his teeth. Then he got back to his place at the corner, silently. As the intertwined thread got torn, the coat itself slipped from her shoulders. For a few seconds, Lily kept sitting unmoved. She exhaled deeply and turned her head to see Marcus crouched at the other corner of the car. There was a lot of distance between them. He did not even look at her now. Lily picked up the coat and folded it. The heater was on. This was why Marcus pulled out her coat. But having him so close to her was so provoking. Her neck was still a little wet from the side. There was an awkward silence in the car. She could hear the sound of her breathing, which she wanted to silence. Finally, the car stopped. Lily looked around, but she could see nothing because the windows were black. Marcus got down from the other door. When he left and she was finally left alone in the car, she exhaled audibly. My God, how will I spend one month like this? Then the door opened. Marcus was standing outside. He said, we have reached, you may come out, and wear the coat now, it is cold outside. Lily got down and looked at so much greenery. Where are we? She thought to herself. It was dark in the dense forest. She raised her head to see the moon so big. It seemed as if the moon was not very far. She wore her overcoat because it was too cold. Marcus said, this way. He pointed at an uphill. Lily finally opened her mouth. Are we in a forest? Marcus nodded. Yes. Isn't it beautiful? But where will we live here? Marcus walked ahead of her. She followed him. You will find out soon. Lily halted and turned back. Marcus asked, What? My luggage? Lily asked hesitantly. My assistant will bring it to your room. Don't worry. Lily kept quiet and climbed the uphill. The leaves were so fresh, even though it was fall season. They glistened even at night. The place was spooky. Just then, she heard a loud howl. She stopped, scared. Oh God, must be a wild bear or a lion. My God, what if there was a tiger? But she was surprised that Marcus kept walking. Was he a psychopath? Or a serial killer? She cleared her throat and shouted, Are you not scared? Didn't you hear that howl? Marcus stopped. He turned back and replied calmly, Nothing will happen. Just come with me. Lily did not seem convinced. She was scared that some wild animal sat above the hill. Marcus got down and walked towards her. He held her hand gently and started walking. She felt secure, hiding behind his broad shoulders. There was no animal, but she still walked with fear. 
Marcus giggled. <laughs> Don't be scared. I live here. All the creatures in this forest are my friends. They obey me. Lily chuckled. <laughs> live here? Live behind a banyan tree or what? Marcus stopped before the palace. He pointed at it. I live there. Lily's jaw dropped. What the actual fuck? She thought she was dreaming. It looked like a Disney palace. More gigantic and beautiful. You live here? Marcus nodded. Yes, let's go inside. Lily could not stop gazing at the huge palace. Marcus had got inside the gate already. Are you coming in or not? Or do you prefer to live behind a banyan tree with a lion? Lily ran inside, afraid he would actually close the gates. At the front porch, she kept looking around. There were glass walls. All the rooms had glass walls. But she could not look inside because all the curtains were drawn, except for one room. At the leftmost corner, the curtains were open. She could clearly see the luxurious room. Lily stopped and raised her head to have a clearer view of the room. Suddenly, someone walked towards the wall, shirtless with blue boxers. He had curly hair and deep blue eyes. Lily suddenly looked down on the ground when she saw him look at her. Marcus asked from the main door, Are you dreaming again? Lily ran inside. She murmured to herself, Who was he? He looked unreal. Ten times hotter than Marcus. I must be dreaming. A guy like him does not exist. But she clearly remembered seeing him for three seconds. His curly hair. Blue eyes staring at her. That shirtless upper body. Lily had uncountable butterflies after seeing him.